Today we're checking out another new tablet by Lenovo. This time the Tab M8 Gen 4. Feels like it wasn't that long ago we were just looking at the third generation. Price on this one is just over $100, but I'll leave a link down below with the current price and more information. <laughs> Some of the specs on this one, it comes with Android 12 Go Edition. They're saying it's upgradable to Android 13. Comes with a MediaTek A22 processor. It's got an eight inch LCD HD display with 1280 by 800 resolution, 350 nits brightness. Now for some reason, this only has two gigabytes of RAM and only 32 gigabytes of storage, which I'm kind of surprised by those two specs. Now apparently there is a version of four gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of storage. Not sure when that one's gonna be available though. You can also expand the storage with a micro SD card. It's got a 5100 milliamp hour battery and they're advertising up to 16 hours video playback. The cameras on here, you've got a two megapixel front facing, five megapixel rear facing. It's got Bluetooth 5.0. Inside the box, you've got your micro SD card, removal tool, quick start guide, safety and warranty information. Surprisingly, they do include a 10 watt wall adapter and a USB-C to USB-A charging cable. Okay, definitely a little bit more modern looking design here on the back. It has a little bit of texture there. It appears to be plastic this time instead of aluminum, but it still looks pretty nice in person. Power and volume buttons are there on the right hand side. Micro SD card tray on the left. And then you have a speaker on each side, plus a headphone jack on the top. USB-C charging on the bottom. You can see it's got a little bit bigger bezel there on the top and bottom. Front facing camera there in the center on the short end. This one also has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now when setting up, you've got the option of pattern, pin, or password. No face unlock with this one though. And just like the bigger Tab P11 I just reviewed, you've got Google Pay and YouTube Music as well. You also have the option of gesture or three button navigation as well. The screen doesn't really feel as bright on here as some other tablets I've tested. This is with the screen brightness all the way up. Surprisingly, the screen does look pretty good on here though, even though it's not full HD resolution. Sort of what I expected, but the storage on here, it's already using 32%. And I haven't added any of the apps that I normally do yet. I know they give you the micro SD card for expanded storage, but sometimes that doesn't work as good as you would think. And then even though this is Android Go instead of the full Android 12, it's still gonna work very similar to regular Android. Swipe up from the home screen to get to all of your pre-installed apps. Good thing is they don't add a lot of extra apps on here, just mainly the ones from Google. Swipe down anywhere to get to the notification shade. And you're gonna have most of your typical shortcuts like internet, Bluetooth, auto rotate, dark theme, Airplane mode, auto brightness, ring, reading mode, screenshot, screen recording, device control, location, eye protection mode, battery saver, focus mode, do not disturb, screencast, mic and camera access, and nearby share. You can also add a few other shortcuts on here as well. You'll also notice left of the home screen is the Google Entertainment Space, which is basically just different types of entertainment, things to watch, games to play, stuff to read or to listen to as well. You could probably get away with reading on this tablet. Just keep in mind, it's not gonna be as bright as other tablets out there. And it's not full HD or 1080p resolution, which I feel like should be a minimum for tablets these days. And then up to 720p resolution for YouTube videos. And as expected, this one is Widevine L3. So you're only gonna get SD playback resolution on apps like Netflix. You're also not gonna be able to download the Geekbench test app on here or Asphalt 9 either. Could be the fact you only have two gigabytes of RAM or that it's not a full version of Android. Either way, the combination of both of those could cause issues depending on what apps you're wanting to use on here. As you can imagine, when it comes to performance on this tablet, it's not going to be too great. In fact, I'm not sure what Lenovo was thinking. Even having this two gigabytes of RAM version, maybe the four gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of storage might be a better option. But unfortunately, that wasn't available when I got mine. When it comes to gaming, again, this is very entry level. I'm kind of surprised it even plays PUBG Mobile. You won't be able to download Asphalt 9, but it does let you play Asphalt 8. Of course, the graphics and frame rates are gonna be a little bit lower on this. So if you're wanting a tablet with decent performance and to maybe do some light gaming, me personally, I would keep looking. 
But one good thing about this tablet is going to be the battery life. It lasted over 12 and a half hours at 100% screen brightness during my testing, which actually seems quite a bit better than the previous model. And that's really good compared to any phone or tablet that I've tested on the channel. Now, besides having a headphone jack on here, it is nice that you've got a speaker on each side. They're not going to be the loudest out there, but still not bad in my opinion, as long as you keep the speakers close towards you. I feel like they'll be plenty loud enough for most people. Inside the camera app, you've got portrait, photo, video. You've also got translate as well. I can tell already, even in my studio lighting, photos are not gonna be very good on this tablet. Looks like they don't even put a photos app on here. So that's probably a good indicator of how good the photos and video is gonna be on here. But I'll go ahead and give you a few samples just to give you an idea of what to expect. When it comes to the cameras, this tablet is definitely going to struggle in lower light situations. And it's kind of hard to see where they upgraded this tablet besides the back of it, which does look a little bit nicer. And then of course a different processor. So hopefully this gave you a little closer look at the Tab M8 Gen 4 from Lenovo. I guess I was expecting a little bit bigger upgrade from the previous versions, but unfortunately it looks like the battery life is really the only upgrade worth mentioning. If you do happen to get this, I would go for the four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, which should be the minimum in 2023. But again, that model wasn't available. Now I do have at least one more new Lenovo tablet video that I'm working on. And then of course, I've got some comparisons to do as well. So you'll wanna look out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.